Okay, time to do a bit more rigging and one of my tips when it comes to rigging is cut a length of a uh, rigging cable that you're going to be working with and clamp one end of it, the end that you're not going to be working with. You can see here this end has not been coloured with my Sharpie, so this is the original colour of the fishing line. And by putting a clamp on the end, it's just a lot easier to find it um, when, you, when you're working with it, because um, put that on the mat and that can disappear quite quickly. So um, yeah, it's just an easy way and also it can help you keep things um, tight as well when you need to. So when we look at our rigging plan, uh, we've got um, the cables here highlighted in the, in the blue that are going down there and we've got four of those to attach. And then we've got um, these green ones, the rudder and elevator controls, we've got four of those, um, two coming from this point here um, and two from there, um, which pass through um, our bulkhead. So they're passing through these little holes here. Um, these then go down the full length pretty much of the fuselage and come out um, towards the end of the fuselage and, and disappear off to, to the rudder. Um, so having looked at it, I can terminate these in the fuselage and put different wires in the fuselage for the for the rudder when we've built the fuselage up. And I think that's probably um, the way to go so that we're not putting too much stress on this joint here. Um, so what we'll do is we'll cut a length and we'll leave it coiled up um, so we can pass it through. We need to make sure we don't get these mixed up so we'll put them in pairs with a little bit of masking tape on them. Um, and then this one actually needs to come down to the bottom of this leg here. Um, so it'll be easier to show you on the model. So it's gonna pass through this hole from that point there uh, we'll have to make a hole in the fuselage um, for it to pass through um, and then it drops down to there now. It goes into there and then it comes out of there and then goes along the wing. But when we're uh, rigging this, we won't be doing it that way. We'll be basically passing down through there, coming back up and then uh, terminating back in here. So that's going to be difficult to do. So we're probably going to terminate in this hole and put a separate cable that runs through there along the full length of both wings. Um, that's solid. You know, if it was hollow, we could do it properly. But because that's solid plastic, it'd be too difficult to open it out. So we're not going to do that. So I'm going to start with the rigging of the control arm because we start from the inside out uh, and that'll be the easiest way of doing it, I think. Right then, I'm going to be using um, a thin CA. This is Zap, but uh, the brand's not really that important. But um, we want to put a night. We, we really don't want any witness of glue. So um, by using thin, um, hopefully, um, nothing will be noticeable on the finished build. And this stuff is, well, it's literally as thin as water, so um, it really won't give us a problem in terms of being visible. Um, and it's, um, its drying time is about two to three seconds, but I find generally with CA glue that um, that slowly lengthens um, during a as the product gets older, so it's all a bit relative, right? So we are going to thread it through there, like so. I'll do my best to keep my hands out of the way, but this is going to be tricky. Uh, 
and then we want it to terminate at the bottom of what is supposed to be a little ring there. There we go. So that's in place. I'm just going to hold it there, get some glue on my applicator. Did we get any on? There we go, definitely some on that time. So a little blow on it just speeds up the activation time. So let's just see if we're attached. Yes, we are. Uh, and then it's coming through little pulley here. You can see side on, you can see the fastener point. There's a little pulley. Um, obviously, I'll show it you properly when we're done. Um, and that needs to then... be in the groove of the pulley pointing upwards to go through that bulkhead so we need to do that like that that's grabbed now so that's going to pass through a bulkhead here and then we're going to terminate it in the floor so I'm just going to cut that one there and this next one Starts on the top of the pulley. Okay, now then that needs to glue to the top of this, which it's naturally pushing against as it's come off the top of the pulley. Fortunately, the camera won't focus on what I'm doing, but basically the line is going through the top of the arm and staying on the top of the pulley. Just need it to dry there. Right, just give that a moment or two to set. Okay, that is our first pair done. Right, this one is going to be a little tricky. Well, the next four are going to be a little tricky because this bulkhead is already in the way, really. Um, so this terminates in there. And, and then there's another one that goes from this side, terminating on that side, which we can't see. So I'm going to put this one in first. I think I might have to do the one after this off camera. And 
close that. There we go. Hopefully, that will dry okay. That looks good. No, might have to do this off camera. While they're on, it took a little bit of doing, but they are on. Um, we'll correct positions and get them taught when we come to terminate them at the other end. But right now, I'm happy that they're just staying in position where they, where they should be. Um, so the next two lines that we've got to add go here and here. Is the last of the cockpit rigging that needs to be done before we can continue and put the next bulkhead in the pilot seat and so on happy with that bit time consuming certainly took a lot longer than what you've seen there are two very small decals to put on this camera so let's get this sorted right, one goes on the front face and one goes on the side face I'm not even sure because of where the camera goes that we'll actually ever see them but they're included so we're going to do them So I'll we'll put them both into soak because they're only small. It'll just take a second to put them on. I thought I'd seen some small decals in my time, but that is pretty tiny. Okay. And the one on the front, which again, I don't think will actually ever be seen, is much bigger than that. There we go. So again, I'm using the US Modern Vehicle Wash for the uh, for the green, and we're just going to uh, highlight some of the uh, some of the details, um, make them pop out a little bit. But this is very much going to be one of those. I know it, that's their pieces. It'll be, it'll be nice if we can see it, but I suspect we won't be able to see it at all. Uh, 
Last thing to do is just some chipping on the um, trigger mechanism. As you can see it, it's it's a revolver um, that they use, but on the reference picture in the instructions of this, it does have quite a lot of chipping on it. So I'm going to do that. I'm also going to do a little bit. This is something that was handled, so I imagine. It got a little bit of um, chip uh, scuffs and things on it. Right, we can now glue that in. That goes in there like that. It's the first time I've tried placing it in. Um, yeah, I'm fairly sure we'll never see those decals. Right. Okay, let's... Uh, See if we can improve your view whilst maintaining me being able to see. There we go. So, yeah, right next to the grill, so that's about right. Okay, let's get that glued in place then. Okay. Happy with that, so... to get to grips with the seat. So we've put um, an, a colour down, which is a Humbrol um, 62 um, matte leather. Now, their leather is a very pale leather and it's great for all sorts of things. It's, it's a really lovely colour and it weathers really well. But what I want to do is I want to use this as sort of the, the, the light notes and I want to use it... Um, really to um, show a little bit of wear. The colour that, um, the main colour on the seat is actually going to be, um, where is it, what have I done with it? There it is, flat brown 7984. Now this has a um, slight r um, red hue to it, which is really nice for leather. If you compare it to chocolate brown, which I see a lot of people using for leather, you can see it's got a little bit of a red luster to it and and I really quite like that so that's what we're going with um, and we're basically going to uh, put it down in in sort of layers of, of wash 
um, and, and build the colour up. And in between um, putting the wash down, we're going to wipe a bit off, and that's going to uh, allow this colour to come through. So let's have a look at that. So the paint currently is straight from the, the bottle, um, and because it's a model colour, it does need a little bit of thinning, but we're making a wash, so I put a little bit more thinner in there to start with. Okay, so what we can do is just slowly build up layers of the paint until we get what we want and then we can uh, do some darker washes to um, accentuate some of the shadow and stuff. So I'm going to start with the um, seat cushion. And you can see how the underlying uh, colour is just breaking through there. So we'll give that a moment or two to uh, dry off. I'm trying to make sure that we don't have it gathering in one area or, or another. And we can put our wash down on the rest of the seat. Sure, we've got the rook, everything painted. I'm not missing anything. We want all that original colour to be covered. So you can see there how that is uh, bringing out all the detail. I'll go in now and I'm just going to wipe some elements off. Just a reminder, we put um, Humbrol 62 down as the base colour. We've then given it um, um, a, a sort of a thick wash, if you like, of the um, Vallejo Brown. Uh, and now we just want to um, highlight again using the Matte 62. Um, so we're just going to dry brush it on, um, and particularly on the uh, seat cushion, that should bring out our details. I'm going to do the same all over that leather seat. Um, and the secret with these uh, when dry brushing, obviously, is not to press on, just drag your brush over and let it uh, collect naturally. And just keep going until you've got the effect shoot that you want.
concentrate a little bit more where you know you're going to get a little bit more heavy wear where arms and feet and what have you are going to be uh, moving on things so in this instance um, I imagine there's quite a lot of arm wear in this area here okay that I think will do for the dry brushing it's picked up all the um, raised edges as, as some high notes and okay uh, we're going to do a little pin wash now which is just going to um, add some definition into the um, into the seat here and I'm using um, wash for wood um, for, for, from MIG um, it's got a natural sort of um, dark brown to it which is perfect for leather um, it, it really works well on any any brown this it's quite a rich uh, color this without it being um, black so I'm just gonna start by putting in the folds and creases See, we're just putting that in wherever we've got um, any uh, dips in the, in the surface there. Um, so I'm going to carry on coming that and then I'll show you what we do next. Okay, so that is our wash um, laid down where we want it. Uh, and then what we're going to do, final process now, is to just go in with some um, thinners, some enamel thinners. I'm going to be using... Um, the uh, MIG uh, Productions thinners, it's a, a nice soft thinner, it's not harsh at all, it's not going to attack any of our other paints and um, we can just thin this down and, and convert it into a wash and move it around until we're happy that we've got um, the effect that we want. So let's have a look at that. So I'm taking my brush and I'm just dipping it into the thinners and then I'm just going to wipe it on uh, a paper tissue and just wipe off the thinners so that the brush is moist rather than uh, damp and we can then just go over and blend and what we're actually doing is we're lifting off and tidying up where we put that thinners and it should just sit in the furrows um, and we'll be lifting off anything that is um, uh, not where we want it to be. Um, it's a slower process doing it with a moist brush um, but I, I, I like the uh, control I get from doing that. So it reactivates the enamel and you you can push it around basically. So you can see at the front here where there's quite a heavy line where we've gone in with the brush. I can just trim that back. It's 
thin down the line and just have the wash collect to where I want it to have collected. Which gives me a much more natural uh, finish than we're able to achieve by just laying the pin wash down. So I'm going to carry on doing that and show you what the final result is. Okay, so that is my finished um, leather. Um, see, I'm happy with that. It does what I was looking for. It's what I had in my mind. So if you can create what you what you visualize in your head, then you've done a good job is, is my, my rule of thumb. So I'm uh, just going to let that dry um, and then um, we'll seal it with a matte varnish and... Um, Job's good. So. seat done we can think about the seat harnesses and I'm not going to use the photo etch from the kit so let's have a look at what we're going to use so I intend to use these uh, and we're going to start by um, dressing the photo etch and giving it a wash and getting it ready for threading on and
Okay, with the um, seat um, now attached to its bulkhead and um, ready to go, um, we need to install our um, steering wheel, um, which we've painted up and we've just given that a bit of gloss to make it um, uh, nice and shiny because I'm sure it would have been um, a, a glossed wooden wheel, like, you know, a bit like um, um, an automotive, like a car wheel uh, would have been at the time. So I'm just test fitting that because we need to add that first and that seems to fit nicely. Yeah, sits there without any glue so we can glue that in as the next job I think. Go just looking at it, making sure that it's straight from the sides and from the above. That looks perfect. I think we'll just there we go. Happy with that. Just been test fitting the um, pilot's seat bulkhead. Um, and I've got that in place, but I can't get it back out again. Um, and I don't want to force it. And as the fit is good and tight, I think we'll just glue it in where it is. So um, it has a location slot underneath, which we can just put some liquid glue in. And a location tab at the back that it sits against. And that should be plenty it'll get further strengthened when we put it into the fuse large halves so i'm just going to hold that in place for a sec and then we'll um, run our rigging through those holes and that's all good then right then let's deal with the lower rigging first so get this out of the way That goes through the upper hole. So we need to get the uh, masking tape off. Okay. Said, I'm going to do the lower rigging first and then I just realised I've taken the upper rigging which is this one coming from here off first. Um, just shows you how difficult it can be to lose um, or how easy it can be to lose your navigation when you're doing rigging. So let's, uh, let's try and feed this one into that slot at the top there we go now this will get secured into place when we put the fuselage uh, rear on. There we go. Brill, that's two in. And we'll just quickly put the uh,
mask and take it back on. We can now take that to the back of the, the model there. Okay, so like I say, this won't be taught until we put the um, fuselage half on, but by that time we'll have the fuselage sides on here, so you might never actually see it that tight, but we will make sure it's tight. You know what, the easiest things in the world become really difficult when you've got a camera on. Anyway, our masking tape is now on. That's our rigging done. You can see that's going to look really quite good once it gets glued into its, its places. I'm happy with that. Okay, that actually completes um, step one and also uh, some of step two. So um, in step two, you put the camera in and the dials in, but I much prefer doing it um, at the places I have because it's just easier to get into. So I've got a little bit of painting to do here. We've got some pipe work that needs to be painted in and a little um, plug or switch or something on this bulkhead just there that needs to be painted in black. So those are my next two jobs um, and then we are on step two. And by not painting it to its full depth, we can keep the illusion of it being a pipe, even though the plastic moulding is a lot deeper than perhaps it could or should be. Mm -hmm. 